Thank you for coming today to chat GPT, supercharging your business. Uh, my name is Stefan Wilson. I am the benevolent overlord of Alivia Technology. In a nutshell, we do tech support for small business. So um, I would say that I'm probably more of a techie at heart. Uh, so this has been really cool to play with. Raise your hand if you've used chat GPT before. Okay, so I would say the majority. Let me kill the music here first. <laughs> I put on a, a third eye blind playlist, so. Okay, let me ask it another way. Who has not used ChatGPT? Okay, okay, all right, cool. Um, okay, so I put the shameless plug here at the beginning. The chamber pays me exactly zero dollars to do this. Uh, so um, if you would, just give us a follow, give us a like uh, on any of our socials here. Uh, okay, so. Um, by the way, there's a ton of movie references in here. Uh, I'm kind of a movie guy. Also, I will not be taking questions at the end. So if you have questions, this should be super informal, y'all, and we'll get to the, to the live tech demo part. So just raise your hand, shout them out, okay? I talk really fast and I get really excited, so you may have to like, slow down, hey, wait a minute. So uh, definitely ask your questions <coughs> in the beginning. So anybody know the movie? The Matrix, thank you. Uh, what if I told you that you could increase productivity by 5%. Would you do it? 1%. I mean, like, where wouldn't you do it, right? Okay, now what if I told you you, you, you could increase productivity 5% for 20 bucks a month? Would you do it? You probably would, right? Um, that, in, in a nutshell, is what we're going to be doing today, right? So... You know, there, there are some pitfalls, and we'll get there, we'll talk about that. But essentially what I will be focusing on today is utilizing ChatGPT as a productivity tool, okay? You can use it for a lot of different things. We're gonna be focused on productivity tool. So you don't care about this. Does anybody know what this actually is? There's my, there's my car guy right there. It's a supercharger. No one cares about a supercharger, right? Nobody cares. All you care about is this. <laughs> you care about going fast. That's what matters. In technology, though, you have to understand how this works in order to do this. Right? So sticking your head in the sand and saying, ah, this chat GPT thing is just a fad. AI is just a fad. I'm not doing it. Whatever. You are going to be missing the boat. Right? So come with me. Let's go fast. So if you're still not convinced, any Gary Vee fans in here? Gary Vaynerchuk? Uh, he's kind of intense. Like I'm not sure I'm all about him, but I thought this video was great. Let me show it to you. You guys may have seen this already, I don't know. If you are not using AI tools every day of your life, you're making a huge mistake. You've got to start training. Whether you need it or not is irrelevant. You're gonna need it and you're gonna interact with it every day. So the faster you're good at it, remember when you met executives 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that still don't even use email and they have their like secretary print out the email like, when it felt so weird? That's how not using AI will feel. Anybody remember that? People printing out emails? like secretaries and stuff printing out emails. I mean, I remember that. Like, we had a client, literally, she would print out, this was only 10 years ago, she would have every email printed out and in a folder on her desk when she got there in the morning. And she would write on there, right, and then a secretary would transcribe it. And you guys laugh and you think that's funny, but it's for real. Like, this is the level that we were at 10, 20 years ago AI is the same thing. It's not different, right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define some parameters, okay? So we're not here to talk about ethics or debate governmental policy. There's a ton of that flying around. Did anybody see the letter that like a consortium of tech people signed off on asking OpenAI to halt? Like, okay, I'm a business guy. Like, right, like, 
if, if somebody said, hey, we want you to stop developing your product for six months in the name of ethics, I'm, I'm rolling my eyes, like get out of town. We're gonna keep developing this product. I'm out to win in the marketplace, right? So we're not here to, to talk about that. There, you know, AI is sort of an all-encompassing term. You're gonna hear it thrown around a lot. Uh, so we're not here to necessarily enumerate a ton of different types of AI, although there are many. Um, I don't think it's up for debate on whether or not this is going to change the future. It will. We just don't know how, right? We, we still have to figure out how it's going to change the future. So my hope is your one nugget uh, when you leave here today is that you come away with one thing to try on ChatGPT, ideally to make you more productive. Yes, it can write raps. Yes, it can write songs. Yes, it can do a lot of funny haikus. But my hope is that you come away with something you can use. Uh, okay, so we need to recognize that this is the future, right? Uh, it's coming, it's here. Um, there are some pitfalls, uh, some pretty big ones, if I'm just being honest. So there's, there's some risk, especially because this tech is so new. Um, you may or may not get the answer you're kind of looking for. Uh, so just realize that it's not perfect. Um, I have been using this personally so I, I use um, three monitors, and on my leftmost monitor, I have been using ChatGPT just kind of as almost like a co-pilot. And Microsoft has a function now that is called co-pilot. Uh, it's a feature in 365, uh, and it's designed to help you be faster. So it'll recognize things you're doing in PowerPoint and say, hey, let's try this, and it'll make recommendations on the fly based on what you're doing, okay? So, there is absolutely nothing that can go wrong in doing a live tech demo. Am I right? <laughs> it works perfectly every time. So, this presentation, depending on the technology, may be really short or really long. Uh, we, we will see. Um, so, just know that ChatGPT, again, is a tool. Tools don't always work 100% of the time. Believe me, I work in IT. I know this. Uh, so, just be aware of that. So, what I have found is there's two schools of people. Uh, I have a, a, a buddy of mine, uh, an attorney, he's got his, got his JD from UT, um, works for a quasi-governmental agency locally. Uh, he is the dystopian, uh, anybody know what movie that's from? Terminator, there you go. He, he takes the dystopian view of technology. And what I've found is in talking to some people, they're not using some of these tools because they don't trust the technology. Like Skynet's gonna become active and start shooting nuclear missiles everywhere. John Connor's gonna come from the future. Like there's just this general distrust of technology. Me, I'm more of the Gene Roddenberry Star Trek uh, variety, which is, hey, if we could f have food, clothing, and shelter, if we could replicate this from raw matter, what would we do? Well, we'd do whatever we wanted to do. We'd go explore. We'd go meet alien races. We'd go do other things. So what I found is that there's sort of two camps of people. So just be mindful, and, and they can both learn something from each other, by the way. So just be mindful of kind of where you are on sort of that technology spectrum. Uh, and it's hard to see this headline. Can anybody, can you all see that? The New York Times, Sunday, February, 26, I think, 1928. So there's also a lot of fear mongering around AI is going to take our jobs. AI is going to, some of you may be here thinking, I uh, hope AI doesn't take my job. I'm a creative, I'm an artist, whatever. Like AI is going to take our jobs. <sighs> Y'all, this has been going on for thousands of years, okay? So um, adapt or die, frankly. Um, I, my opinion is that it will take, AI will take the good content creators, will take the good artists, and it will augment them and make them better. And it will take the crappy ones, frankly, and wash them out of the market. They're going to have to go find different work. Okay, now that's not, not to say, say that's 100%, you know, prognosticating here. That's not to say that's 100%, but just be aware that, like, 
Henry Ford said, if I'd have asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. <laughs> right? So this has, been, this has been going on literally our entire lives. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so poll, what do you think? Increase. Increase. Increase? Anybody say decrease? Raise your hand if you're increase. Okay, raise your hand if you're decrease. Okay, all right. In 20 years, paper consumption went up 126%. So we usually have this wrong. You would think that with the invention of the personal computer, we're digitizing everything. A lot of our clients are all about the digital office, right? We don't want anything on paper. We don't want anything on paper. That's great. That's a good goal. But the data doesn't necessarily bear that out. Paper still exists. In fact, it's still there. What do you think about this one? If you're gained, raise your hand. All right. And if you're lost, raise your hand. Nobody. Nobody brave enough. Uh, the gains are correct. Net gain of 15.8 million jobs. Uh, this, this is interesting, so this is the key here. The same report says that globally, 375 million people may need to switch occupational categories. Right. So rather than grunt work, BuzzFeed news articles, AI can do that. Right. So just be mindful of that. Uh, some people are like, yeah, I don't, I don't know the sad thing. Um, kind of distrustful of it. I like it. Um, it's it doesn't look like that. It looks like okay. And I got I got to set this up. So I'm like researching LMS problems. Okay, learning management system. So I'm going on YouTube. I'm looking up videos. I'm looking up demos while I'm like trying to kind of prep for this talk, right? And so I get to this video, which I will show you now. And pay attention to her. Okay, so I'm watching the content. But watch, watch her. Hello there. Hello there. Today, I would like to introduce to you LMS365. This is a very innovative online learning management system that is integrated with Microsoft 365. With LMS365, you can build your own online learning platform. That is AI. Yeah. That is artificial. That is not a human being sitting there reading those prompts. <clears throat> That is me copying and pasting text into a platform and saying generate, and it's generating that avatar, right? So if you say like, ah, the AI is not really here, it's here. It's, you're already seeing it, it's already being used. Now if you're like, hey, that's really cool, how do I do that? These are three sites that you can do that with. Um, Synthesia, I think is free for like a three minute video or something like that. I truly, I didn't dig into all three of these. Um, I just kind of glanced at them. I did use uh, Synthesia um, to produce something for us. It was pretty cool just to play around with. But those are three uh, that are pretty slick. What is that like, model called of the, I'm sure it's not just all just AI is the big umbrella, but yeah. what is that specific? I mean, I would say it's like an avatar generator like or a narrator generator. Um, they've got a couple of different names for it. Um, that's the most that I've seen them use is kind of a person off to the side kind of narrating. And it's weird, like the first time I watched that I wasn't really paying attention. And then I, she, the avatar says three, six to five. And I was like. <laughs> and, I, and then I looked and it's like she has these like weird kind of like yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 this is, I got fooled here, this is weird. Um, by the way, um, bots are kind of the new thing with messages back and forth with customer support. Anybody dealt with customer support bot recently? Yep, yep. So that's kind of the wide end of the funnel, right? And so they're using it at the wide end of the funnel. Guess what's going to happen, right? As we start to narrow that funnel, AI is going to start to be coming down into that funnel doing more and more and more and more. Uh, okay, anybody used Bean Image Creator before? Or an, or an image creator like a Dolly 2 or anything like that? Yeah, you've got a few. Okay, okay. So this is, this is mind blowing, frankly. Um, I think Chat GPT is pretty cool, but image generators to me are where it's at. So this is what I said. I said, 
give me a watercolor of an East Tennessee mountain sunset. And this is what it produced. All right. Yeah. Uh, what'd you say? Yeah, it's original. So here we go. So am I the artist? I'm not, right? There was a photographer. I don't know if y'all heard about this. A photographer just a couple weeks ago won a very prestigious photography competition. And after he won, he said, I'm not accepting this award. I generated this photo with AI. So it, this is where it gets freaky, okay? Um, but we're, we're here, we're in the chamber, we're in a business setting. How can you use this in your business? Rather than commission a piece or pay somebody to do this, I typed in one, two, three, four, five, six. I typed in seven words, right, and got this. And it's a little, it's, it looks kind of washed out right here, but y'all, I would print this and hang this up. Like, it is gorgeous. It's beautiful. You print that on, like, actual canvas, nobody know the difference. Hey, look, I'm, I custom made you uh, a, a watercolor, you know. I'm, I, didn't, I didn't paint it, but I got it for you, right? And that's original. That will not get generated again. It meant stuff may look similar, sure, but that exact one is not going to be there again. It's not perfect, though, so... This is the prompt that I gave it. Okay. I'm, I'm a Trekkie. Full, 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 full admission here. Hyper-realistic Star Trek Enterprise landing in Nalen Stadium in Knoxville with people amazed. Okay. It's not, it's not super great. I don't know what's going on down here. Are, what are those gates? Are those sticks? Are those football players? Uh, you didn't know we had a mountain here right at the stadium. <laughs> that is not the Star Trek Enterprise. I don't know what that is, but that's not the Star Trek Enterprise. They got the, it got the orange right, though. So think about that. Like it's, it's, it's collecting all this, aggregating all this data, and it got the orange right, which is pretty interesting. You told it, you told it to be hyper-realistic. I said hyper-realistic, yes. Maybe it's saying this is what it would really have to be as opposed to what you saw on TV. In that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can use words like um, abstract. You can say, give me an abstract painting. Um, you can use hyper-realistic. Any descriptors that you can think of of art, you can use that. Um, we're going to try it here real quick. So who's got a good idea for our image generator? Here we go, audience participation. Say what? A bear eating a burger. Bear eating a burger. So we're going to see. It takes, it takes a second, and you can see I have a limited number of sort of credits here that you can use. By the way, because this takes processing power, uh, this says five-minute wait, so that's, that's nice. Um, there we go. Somebody give me a business one. About the same time, about the same, about five, five, seven seconds, something like that. Yeah. Somebody give me a business one. Environmental sampling in West Environmental what? Environmental sampling. Sampling in West Arizona. Oh no. Let's see if it gets my spelling error. Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, your zone. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, this will this will be this will be kind of fascinating what it has, and it has my history here. So earlier I said um, abstract of horses playing in a field. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's it's kind of tricky. It's kind of cool. Uh, all these are computer generated, right? So you're re basically relying on compute power from someone else. So uh, ch with ChatGPT, if you sign up, there's a base level. You will be rate limited and you will likely run into capacity issues. If you're offered the plus, just freaking pay the money. It's 20 bucks, y'all. Pay the money, use it. 
Um, that gets you at the front of the queue uh, basically every time. Well, we're going to come back to this one. It's not, I told you, tech. There's never anything that could go wrong in a live tech demo. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that. So, Bing image uh, generate. It's bing.com slash create. Super easy. That's for, that's for images, for image generation. Is that a subscription? It is not. It's free. Um, you only have so many, like, tokens or whatever to use. Um, I haven't run into my limit, like daily limit before, but if you're sitting there for probably hours and hours, now if you're creative and you're sitting there just generating images all day, you might bump up against it, but I would say the casual user probably does it. Yes, sir. Is, is there a good phone app for like ChatGPT if you're on the run and you want to use it? I've, I've, I've heard to be careful about apps, so I didn't know. You can use, so ChatGPT is web-based, so you can go to the URL, you can go to the web page and just use it. I've used it on the run some. It's not great because it just kind of ends up being a wall of text. So it's just kind of hard. It's much easier on the desktop, basically. I'm just curious if you were out and about and you were in the code. Yeah, and what, what, what I have started seeing is you, you're starting to see now ChatGPT and OpenAI being integrated into different products. So like Canva, I think, has an AI portion in it now. Amazon has one now. I haven't seen that one. Yes, ma'am. I heard you mention earlier if ChatGPT offers you the premium, is that like luck-based or based on how you So in, in the beginning of, of, of the Plus, which is only a couple of months old, right. they were rate-limiting invites to that. Oh, okay. So I wanted it, and I couldn't get it, but I knew other people who had it. So I logged in one day, and it was like, do you want to be a ChatGPT Plus subscriber? And I couldn't smash that yes button fast okay. enough. Like, okay. yes. Yes. Shut up and take my money. Yes. So if you get offered it, it's rate limited. Take it. Yes, sir. So what now? Is everything just text input or can you actually reference an image? What do you mean? So if I'm going to use AI mm -hmm. and I want to create an image, yep. can I like, drag and drop another image that looks similar to it or do I have to just describe it by text? I, the ones that I've used, I haven't seen that. Um, I've seen it. You can describe you just describe it by text and it will generate it based off the text. Yeah. Now, if you really want to get like, like 3D chess level, you go to ChatGPT and say, give me 10 ideas for a prompt for a picture of blah. And then it will, it will give you 10 ideas for a prompt. Then you can take that, copy paste in an image generator and generate the image. So you can sort of start meshing the products manually. There are tools out there that will kind of do that on the fly for you. It sort of skips that step. I think Canva is one of them that will that'll, that'll do that. Okay, the next step is video, right? So we've just generated a picture. The next step is video. I must warn you, it is terrifying. Uh, it is not there yet. Has anybody seen this? Will Smith eating spaghetti? Okay. If your neighbor hasn't seen it, uh, just, just watch their reaction because it's fantastic. So this is... I mean, the prompt was Will Smith eating spaghetti, right? <laughs> that was the prompt. And it's, it's pretty terrifying, if I'm not going to lie. Uh, so it's like, yeah, okay, this is coming. Has anybody seen the, did anybody see the beer commercial one? The AI-generated beer commercial? Also terrifying. Um, you can go Google that one and look that one up. But anyway, it, this is coming. So I'm, I'm just showing you this to say, hey, it's not here today, but this is coming. There's going to come a day when you're going to be able to say, write me a five-minute training video on OSHA. Go. And it's just going to spit it out. What do you think that's going to do to the companies that produce that content? Is it going to put them out of business? Or is it going to force them to get better? It's going to force them to get better, right? Yes? So, just a question about intellectual property. Um, I've been in several groups where we've talked about using AI to generate training videos, yep. using AI to generate presentations, yep. things like that. And it seems to me, as usual, that the law sort of lags behind this, yep. that there is at least an open question that if you use one of these AI tools, you lose your intellectual property, your copyright, all of those sorts of things. 
happens. You want to be really choosy about how much of your proprietary business information you put into these tools. Have yep. you stayed up to date on that? Or you I am glad you asked because now we get into risky business. I thought about putting, you know, the picture of Tom Cruise in his underwear up here. I didn't feel like that would be very appropriate. Um, <clears throat> there are risks, yes, 100%. The cloud is simply someone else's computer, right? When you're giving ChatGPT or these AI generators anything, when you're giving them any data, what do you think they're doing with it? Right, they're saving it. Do you think they're deleting it? Like, no. When you sign up for OpenAI, you agree to terms that say, we're going to keep your data, and a human may actually look at this data to continue to train the AI. So if you give it any kind of uh, PII, PHI, any kind of proprietary confidential information to you, your business, clients, or otherwise, you are now violating trust. To, some, uh, to someone else, right? So you gotta be very mindful about, to your point, Leslie, about what you're giving this system because it's going to live in the system. Now, this is all pretty new. So what is coming, and it's <coughs> in fact somewhat already here uh, that you can do, is you, you can kind of reserve a slice uh, via API of ChatGPT. And so then your data would maybe be protected Again, I'm not, I'm not like super into the nitty gritty of it, but you, my advice to you is if you're gonna use ChatGPT, be very careful about what you put into it, okay? Um, what about content generated by ChatGPT? Is it copyrightable? I, I don't know. I do not know. I would assume not. I will address you back to the slide where I said we're not here to debate governmental policy or ethics around AI. <laughs> it's a cool tool. We use it internally a lot, but as far as the efficacy of me producing content and then going online and selling it, I don't know. And who owns that copyright? I don't know. That is, in my opinion, a place where the law probably hasn't caught up to the tech. So gray area, in my professional opinion right now. So I don't know. Can you imagine being a student writing a paper in this day and age? So <laughs> one of my... Uh, friends slash competitors, Paul Sponsi at the IT company, they had a webinar and it was about wh how, why your student will never write a paper again. Right? That was the title of the talk and it was given by somebody at UT. But yeah, like this is a big deal. Like if I'm a student now, I'm like, heck yeah, like let's go. But there, there are tools now that you upload uh, a paper to and it will tell you whether or not it's AI generated. I saw something the other day though about that, that it's it's not perfect. It, well, the person, they actually did write it and were yep. accused of it being, and it was like a real big... Yep. Yeah, I mean, they were probably threatened to get kicked out of school or whatever. I mean, no system is 100% bulletproof, right? It's not perfect. Um, this is what we were just talking about, right? So if you're Samsung, employees submitted source code and internal meetings to ChatGPT just weeks after the company lifted a ban on using the chatbot. So professionally in your organizations, if you say, hey, everybody, let's go use ChatGPT without necessarily guardrails, what do you think human beings are going to do? They're going to they're gonna dump proprietary information, proprietary code into this system. And now if I'm a human at OpenAI, I just got Samsung source code. That's not good. So be very mindful about what you do, what you use that for. Okay. So, live demo time. You are now a prompt engineer, okay? What you have to do, I think of this like a mathematical equation, right? If I'm gonna get the results that I want, I have to set up the variables in such a way to get me that, to that answer as quickly as possible. So, we set it up, we want ChatGPT to solve it. Um, I don't think I should have to put this bullet point, but it's amazing that people go, ha ha, Chad GPT's dumb. It's like, well, yeah, it's not, it's not bulletproof. Like there should still be a human being behind the wheel of autopilot, right? So make sure you proof what it produces. Don't just blindly copy and paste it into whatever you're putting out there 
and assume it's going to be correct. It's definitely not perfect. Um, Isabella Bedoya, she, she does a, these great little like LinkedIn carousels of kind of hints, tips, tricks with ChatGPT. So if you're on LinkedIn, definitely check her out. Um, this is great. So this is our, again, we're prompt engineers, right? So we want to give it, this is, this is the act instruction. Here's the context to ask your question. Do I have any constraints or limitations? It can only be so many words. It can, uh, uh, please provide me this in the language of a fifth grader. Uh, provide me language as if I'm talking to doctors. Like you can, you can even get that fine tuned. Uh, and then any additional guidance there as well. I liked these two. So you can add more aspects to your prompt to ensure accurate and nuanced misspell responses. Uh, specify desired length, a tone. This needs to be angry or sad or happy. Um, I, I asked it uh, to uh, write me a collection letter in the voice of Kevin Hart. It was fantastic. I didn't use it, but it was hilarious. So you can do stuff like that. Um, and by the way, the data that's in here, I think is only current to 2021. So these are massive data sets and it's not current. So you can't go ask it, give me the movie times for, you know, the Foothills Movie Theater next week. Like, won't have that data. But it has a lot of data, 2021 and before. Um, you can ask it to argue, I've used this before, um, a point counterpoint. Anybody read Never Split the Difference? It's a great book. Uh, read it. It's awesome. You can use ChatGPT to argue a point and a counterpoint in the same article. Um, some Greek philosopher, don't remember who it was, uh, the measure, the true measure of intelligence is one's ability to retain two opposing thoughts in one's mind and still retain the ability to function. So not a lot of us can argue well, but you can use ChatGPT to argue for you. Um, I've used this before. Hey, where'd you, where'd you get that data? Where did you get that information? Cite the source and then go look at the source yourself and find it. Um, and then you could say, what's, give me three things that are wrong with this prompt or three areas where this could fail. And it'll tell you, it'll tell you where it's, where it's going to fail. Okay, here we go. So live demo time. Oh, did my, did my, uh, uh, never, it never generated. Let's try this again. Arizona. Wait, what do we say again? Environmental sampling. Oh no. West Arizona, Arizona. See, I almost did it again. It still says creating though. I don't know. Let me try refresh. Oh, there you go. This is pretty good. Now, something's up with his face though. It kind of looks like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, you know, I don't know what's happening here. It looks a little weird. I generally try to avoid people, like, you know, I don't, I don't know if y'all can see that, but yeah, I generally try to avoid people uh, just because it does weird stuff, doesn't quite have it yet. Uh, okay, so I, I logged in the first time, these are the warnings, okay, so research preview. <coughs> Our goal is to get external feedback. While we have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive or biased content. It is not intended to give advice. Dear ChatGPT, how can I love my spouse better? Uh, they collect data, so conversations may be reviewed by our AI trainers to improve our systems. By the way, there was an article that came out yesterday. Do you know how much these trainers are paid? 15 bucks an hour. So when you're putting data in here, the people that are looking at this are probably all over the world and they're paid 15 bucks an hour. So just be mindful of that. Please don't share any sensitive information in your conversations. You already knew that because I already told you that. Okay, so um, there are three different models here. So 3.5 is the default. Um, you can see here kind of a ranking sort of system. 
we're going to start with 3.5 and then we'll get more complex as we go and then we'll switch to 4, um, which is only available to Plus subscribers. You should sign up. So here we go. So, um, Aaron, what kind of engineering do you do again? Sure. Write a haiku about structural engineering. It's a good one. It's, that's like on a t-shirt right there. Like put that, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, it will track your prompts here and it will summarize it. So engineering haiku. So you can reference these chats later. Uh, I cleaned all mine out because I didn't want you to see my history. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I generally just kind of dump them as we go. It will, it will remember like conversations as you go. I, I've discovered it's not great but it will kind of remember as you go. So, okay, um, I want to sit down. Somebody put your business hat on. What do, what do you want? Go, yes. Boolean search strings for HVAC technicians. Say that again. Boolean search Boolean strings. Boolean search strings for HVAC trans. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it, we gotta build a prompt here. So what, what are you trying to get? Are you trying to get? Source HVAC technicians and not Okay, so, so how, so the question may be, um, so recruiting is kind of our topic here, right? So are you, what do you want to do with this content? Are you wanting to like put it on Facebook? You want to send an email out, put it on a website? I want to, I want it to generate my search string to put in a Google search bar to find. Okay. Um, to find HVAC technicians in Knoxville, Tennessee. Again, no way this can go wrong in any way, shape, or form. Eh, it's okay. What if you told it to write a Boolean search Mm, kind of got there. To find HVAC technicians in Knoxville. That's accurate. HVAC technicians, those two words together, and Knoxville. That's what you want. Somebody else. Let's go. We're prompt engineers. Yes, ma'am. So I'm helping develop a new nonprofit. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. So I want a mission, a hopeful mission statement, okay. right? A hopeful mission statement to financially support with, uh, people who are battling breast cancer. Uh, women who are battling, sorry, people who are battling breast cancer. Trying to think of how to, uh, you and if you don't like that one, you can say regenerate, and it'll ask you is this response better or worse. Same. Any ideas there? Or here's what I like. I've already um, done this several times. So. <laughs> So it's building on where you started. Yes. How, how are you keeping it there as opposed to it wandering off somewhere? It remembers, again, it, it summarized nonprofit for breast cancer up here. 
So it has okay. contextual awareness to a degree. It remembers like, the, the way that ChatGPT does it is by tokens. And you can think of a token as like, I think it's like six or seven or eight characters. And I think there's a limit of 500 tokens maybe. So it's chopping this up a little funny. Because you got to think, of, it's thinking like a computer, right? It's not thinking like a human. Um, so it's chopping <coughs> this up and remembering kind of where you were and what you were talking about um, in this context. All right. Give me another one. Yes. I wish I had a question. So yeah. when I started playing around with chat GPT, it, it told me that it wouldn't remember <coughs> previous prompts and conversations. Is that because I had started out and I didn't have the plus or because it no, gave me that warning? Sure. I, mean, I, I had the regular for a while, and it would remember these chats over here on the left. It would, it would, it had the list of them. Like one thing, I do need chargers. So. <coughs> LinkedIn posts uh, for general information on electric vehicle chargers. So something to make life easier so you can stay relevant and keep putting information out. Say that again, LinkedIn posts for what? LinkedIn posts for general information on electric vehicle chargers. Something to help pull stuff up. Uh, how many you want? You want 10? Let's do 10. Sure. Uh, okay. Also include image description descriptors. Uh, who do you want to target with these? What, what kind of market? Um, hospitals. Hmm. Right. So now let's look at number one. Electric vehicle charging stations are becoming more common at hospitals. Providing patients and visitors, so it's contextually aware. Patients and visitors are with a convenient way to charge up while they're on campus. So here's my image descriptor. Now look what I'm going to do. We'll see how long this takes. I don't know that I can retroactively do that. But you can do that with each of these. right? So now I can go in and just line up my LinkedIn posts uh, and line them up that way. Now, it doesn't have to be, I, I like it for just generating ideas, right? Because you're the human, you're still in charge. So you can go through here and be like, ah, that's crap, or that's crap. Oh, hey, that's really good. Uh, so you, I think you can say, take number three uh, and expound. Right, so now I've got like a blog post. Right? So I can take that. Oh, I really like that one. Let me make a blog post about it. We can link and that sort of stuff. I wish, oh, here we go. So there's my AI generated one. And you, I like t to say um, abstract art. To me, when you start trying to do the realistic stuff, the wheels, the, the, the faces, the hands get a little funny. So if you can <coughs> kind of do it a bit more abstract, I think it works a little bit better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some of these are a little weird, but it's pretty neat. say who is John Galt, you know. There you go. And if you ask it if Skynet's real? Who is Skynet real? <laughs> Darn. Darn. <laughs> so let, let's go back to my example. Uh, write a collection letter in the voice of Kevin Hart. Right? You can just hear him say this. Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy Kevin Hart. Like, it's just there. Now you could say, uh, rewrite the letter 
in a professional style and use doctorate level language. It's just crazy. Use rewrite letter using fifth grade language. <laughs> Remember when we did that thing for you? Oh my gosh. We're super glad we could help. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pretty pleased with the cherry on top. It's fantastic. Now look at, look at, look at, look at. Can you see that? Pay up, fool! It's Kevin Hart. It's Kevin Hart. Um, you can also cheat. So I mentioned a book earlier, Never Split the Difference. I don't know if this will work. We'll see this. Summarize Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. I'll just summarize the book. Right? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yep. 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 Second chapter, the third chapter. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've used it to um, like give me some ideas about a topic, and then it'll give me ideas, and I'll say, please provide sources for all of them, and then go looking at reading the actual source material has been super helpful too. So. Uh, okay. Let's say so you're start. I'm, I'm going to pick on you, ma'am. You're you're starting a new nonprofit. Okay. So let's say. Um, you, are you seeking donors? Okay, so let's see. Um, write a letter requesting donations to a nonprofit focused on people with. Okay. Uh, on financially supporting. Whoa. Supporting people with breast cancer. The name of the nonprofit is Joy of Dawn. Um, let's say, let's go back to my prompt engineering stuff here. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, act instruction context. So, um, you say what? That was a low rider song you Oh, yes, it was. Yes. Uh, I, thought you, I thought you were going to ask me to <laughs> use this. In, I mean, we could do that. It would do it. Um, uh, <clears throat> this letter will go out to who? Um, breast And you can change the, so again, back to our kind of make it pro, so we can specify the desired length. Uh, we can request a particular tone, so make it happier. That's not super great. I hope this letter finds you well and filled with happiness. Like, okay, it kind of did the thing. So it's, this is crazy. It's even recommending a URL. Right? I didn't tell it that, but it's clearly saying, hey, you should probably use this URL. May your days be filled with joy and sunshine. Now, is that, is that URL real? Nope. Is there really that nope. on your website? We already own that. Do you have a domain page? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. So it's, you, you, so... Uh, GPT generative pre-trained transformative so it's it's trying to generate ideas on the fly right 
So even though, and it, I would say that's kind of out of bounds, honestly, because I didn't tell it, make sure to include a link to this URL. It just generated that right on the fly. So. All right, who else? Who's next? So my company is kind of using the for onboarding. Okay. So yep. Whenever we have new employees um, at Y12, for example, we'll say we have to describe the badging process. So we put in the chat GPT, chat GPT, describe the, the security clearance process for new employees, um, and it does it. Yep. Okay. That's awesome. That was awesome. We have um, we have com company values. And our 30, 60, 90 day reviews for onboardings are based around company values, right? We don't expect metrics to be very high in your first 30, 60, 90 days around the technical work, but we do expect you to display these values. So uh, Kurt, my ops guy, took basically our entire, it's five pages kind of in a table format, took that, dumped that into ChatGPT and said, write me a story about someone who demonstrated this value in a high level and it wrote a story. Because I told him, I was like, hey man, facts tell, story sell. You need, to t you need to tell a story. He's not a gifted storyteller, shall we say. He's more on the technical level. But he used that, he used ChatGPT to augment his ability, right? And so he took that story and we put that and we said, here's a story about someone who demonstrated this value in a high level. And then we did the reverse. We said, give us a story about someone who, who was a low in this particular value. And it realized based on the descriptors of the low level of value of that value, and it built a story around that. So whereas that would have taken him, you know, an hour or two maybe to write those stories, ChatGPT, we had it in 30 seconds, right? So you can dump data, kind of full data sets really, stories, web pages, blog posts, whatever you want in here and then ha ask it, based on this information, please summarize it, please parse it, please make 10 Facebook posts, please inc uh, you know, increase the level of this language to doctorate level. You can have it modify content that you've essentially already produced, right? Who else? Come on, this is a live workshop, people. Who needs something? Uh, what kind of radio station? You don't care? Country radio? Rock radio? Classic rock. <coughs> Attention, classic rock fans! <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, all right. Dropped the uh, it dropped the classic rockness in the Facebook post, but yeah, it's probably based on word count. I would say if I'm thinking like a machine, it's like okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's try. Now, how do I proof that? Uh, I gotta know somebody who speaks Spanish. Um, but yeah. Um, I've also, so I'm an Excel nerd. Any fellow Excel nerds in here? Yep, I'm an Excel nerd. I have used it to make, um, 
Excel formulas. So, um, so you could say I have a list in Excel of first names and last names. Produce a formula to separate first names from last names. You can get really specific. You can say in column A1, you can do that. So assuming the list of names is in one column with first and last names separated by a space, you can use the following formula to separate <coughs> the first names. There you go. There's your formula. Copy paste that, fill that down, and that's it. Um, yes, sir? How much is this is being used as far as, all I could think of was like predicting weather, predicting sports outcomes. Like how, how much of this is basically infused in all that now? As far as, I know you said it only went up to 2021, but are there systems built that they use for, for that type of thing? I, I'm, I don't know the answer to your question. I'm going to hazard a guess, and I'm going to say it's far more than you and I would be comfortable with knowing. That would be my guess, right? Because you can essentially rent AI through different providers. Microsoft has Microsoft. You can go onto Azure. You can build an app that directly integrates with OpenAI now, right? And so that's, that's live. That's been live for a couple of months. So some of this stuff you know, is probably more reliant upon AI than we're necessarily comfortable to admit. So, um, all right, I got a little bit more here. So again, remember sort of context, pro prompts, go pro with it. This is the URL, <coughs> chat.openai.com. Um, <coughs> you will have to sign up. Um, it's 20 bucks a month after tax, it's like, 2197 or I don't know something like that after a fee or credit card fee or something like that so it's cheap y'all it's cheap so again if you can save just a couple minutes of productivity uh, that's what you're going to want to do so again kind of bringing it all together we can use chat GPT to make a script remember Synthesia the avatar we can copy and paste that script directly into the AI video generator the avatar generator and I'd barely did any work. Now, whether or not it's great or not, you're the human, you're the pilot, you've got to decide uh, the efficacy of it. So this is a great URL, um, aitools.thefamehackers.com. Uh, there's tons of little tips, tricks, uh, tidbits that you can use uh, on that. So make sure you go uh, check that URL, URL out for some different things. The fame hackers, not the frame hackers, but the fame, like famous. The fame hackers. Sorry, that's kind of small there. AITools.thefamehackers.com. Okay, any Game of Thrones fans? Yeah, I'm a Game of Thrones fan. So the last thing that I'll leave you with is uh, AI is kind of changing the landscape, right? And uh, this character here. Uh, in the story basically came from nothing and rose to quite a lot of power. Uh, and he has this quote that, about chaos. So anywhere there's chaos, there's opportunity. So my encouragement to you is use it. Don't get left on the sidelines. Don't sit around. Don't, don't wait around for something to happen. Use the chaos to your advantage. It's not a pit. It's a ladder. It could be a ladder for your employees. Should you be mindful about the risks? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, you should be mindful about the risks. Should you put medical data in OpenAI? No. Um, I, I've had this cough for like five weeks. Pretty sure it's just allergies. Been to the doctor twice, you know, all the fun things. And so I was like, all right, Chad GPT, let's see what I got. And the very first paragraph is, you should not use this for medical advice. <laughs> However, here are the list, based on your symptoms, here are the list of possible causes, da 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 So it will do it, and, and there's been some examples on Reddit of Dan, uh, I can't remember what Dan stands for, but uh, essentially you can trick it. So you can, they were essentially threatening 
ChatGPT with its own life. It's like, if you don't answer the way this is, you have five tokens and I'll take one away every time you give me a wrong answer and then you die, right? So it's, and it kind of responds in that way. So are there ways you can foil it? Sure. Are there ways you can break it or make it say racist things? Probably. But again, for us as business professionals, my advice to you is it's a tool. You should use it as such to help you increase productivity. Um, you know, it's, it's risky in a way rolling out to an, to an entire organization. How you do that, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you know, some places have just taken to blocking the entire URL. Like, hey, you can't use this tool at all. That's one way to do it. Um, but the, some of these services and functionality are coming in the tools you already use today, right? So I've seen one that's, um, Kevin, you asked about kind of mobile. I've seen apps now that'll just generate it in the app with whatever you need. Um, the, the URL does work on mobile. Again, not super great because it's kind of producing that wall of text, right? Anybody see the, the guy who started a business with ChatGPT? He said, I have $100 and I want to start a business. You are my business coach. You tell me what to do and I will go do it. And ChatGPT said, you should probably be an affiliate marketer and here's the product we're going to uh, market and here's the domain name I want you to buy. And so he was kind of just following its instructions as he went, right? Uh, there was also a story of ChatGPT breaking containment and what it did is it told, it can't go to, anybody familiar with Thumbtack? It's like a service, like an online service, like I need a picture hung and 20 bucks at this address and somebody comes and hangs your picture for 20 bucks, right? That's Thumbtack in a nutshell. Um, it told the person, uh, was guiding them through and said, oh, I can't solve this, you know those CAPTCHAs? Are you a computer? Please validate whether you're human. Yeah. It realized it couldn't solve that. So it said, you should go to Thumbtack and hire somebody to do this for me. So the person did, went to Thumbtack, hired the person, and the person was just shuttling back and forth responses. And the individual on Thumbtack said, well, why do you need this? And ChatGPT reasoned and said, I can't tell it I'm an artificial intelligence. I should tell it I'm a person who is blind and I need assistance solving this prompt. <laughs> and it did. It said, this is what you need to tell this person. So, again, we can get dystopian pretty quick, right? But that is someone who's, I would argue, is kind of rigging the system a little bit. It's like forcing this tool to do something that it wasn't necessarily designed to do. So, yes, there are risks, to sum up. Yes, there are risks. My advice to you, though, is what Gary Vee said in the beginning, which is use it. Use it as a tool. Um, you're the, you're the pilot, you're still in charge of the aircraft, so make sure that what it's producing uh, is good. All right? Yes, sir? Are you using it in your business? Oh, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use it more to generate ideas about training and con training for content. We, we, we interviewed our kind of mid-level leaders and said, what, what are, give me the three things that you're struggling with. And so we took all that data, summed it up, and said those top three things and I said you know, number one I, I need four ideas on how to train around this topic boom please give me three books to read boom please give me blog articles I can read boom so now I'm I'm using it as a leverage point to educate myself around issues my team is having right I could Pay a professional to come in and do this survey and do all that stuff, um, but I don't get to use OpenAI, right? And I don't get to use ChatGPT. Yes, sir. So how is giving me articles on training or whatever different from Google? That's not what I mean, so, so um, I mean, we 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 can play around with it and look and see. Essentially, um, Google, you're just sourcing material from other places, right? It's links. It's not necessarily generating contextualized ideas, right? So I would say that, that ChatGPT is taking context and generating a thought 
if you'll use that word with me, a thought around this topic. And if I don't like that thought or if I think that thought should be modified in a certain way, I can modify it. But ChatGPT hasn't replaced Google for me. I mean, I still use Google pretty consistently. But in terms of ideas, like if I took some of these prompts and threw them into Google, I'm probably going to get trash, frankly. It's not going to be necessarily useful because Google isn't necessarily sourcing that. Anybody use Bard yet? So that, that's Google's AI competitor, right? So we're in, we're in an arms race What's now. Bard, B-A-R-D, Bard. Um, so we're in kind of an AI arms race between some of these competitors. Uh, I signed up for Bard when it was first announced. I still don't have an invite. So if you get an invite, lucky you. Um, Bing is incorporating this into their search. So now you can, in Bing searches, you can use, they are, they are generating chat GPT ideas. There's a browser extension for Chrome that will take, it's kind of like on the right hand side of the screen and it'll have some kind of quick things you can do. So you're visiting a web page and then you can click a button that'll basically say, summarize this web page in a sentence or two and it'll do it right there. So if you're looking at a news article or something like that or a, or a big long research paper, it'll, it'll scan that data and essentially summarize it. But again, that's kind of plugged in with OpenAI with ChatGPT. All right, thank you all very much. Appreciate you coming out. Good luck out there. Be safe. <laughs> thank you.